guys, it's Fabio with Fresco Recording Services in Pensacola, Florida. That was Buster and Lily. They're in the studio helping me during the quarantine slash whatever you want to call this that's going on. Uh, with COVID-19 going on, a lot of us are stuck at home. And I've talked to a lot of artists who are working on their projects currently, and, or were at the time during, uh, before this happened, and they want to continue working on it. Uh, we're keeping traffic in the studio down, but we are encouraging more of our artists to use our mixing and mastering services. So I made a couple of videos to kind of highlight how to get the best quality recordings at home so that you can send it to your mix or mastering engineer. So let's move over and check out some of that. So in this video, I'm gonna cover how to properly choose a space and how to properly set up a microphone. This is assuming that you have an interface, a mic cable, a mic, and a computer and some sort of program to record in as most home setups have. Now, if you don't have a computer, microphone, interface, or anything, there are plenty of other ways to record yourself at home. So let me know in the comments section if this is you and I can maybe make a video of different ways to record without any of those things. So the first thing you want to do after you've accumulated all the things that you need is to find the best place to set up the mic. With home setups we don't have the luxury of putting a mic wherever we want so the main thing to focus on is controlling the environment. If you're in a bedroom chances are the room is box shaped and your voice bounces all over the place. Walk around the room singing or clapping so you can hear the reflections and if you get to an area of the room where the reflections are very minimal then start there think of what you can resource in your home to help control the reflections for example i've used mattresses against the walls comforters egg crates foam i've tacked all kinds of things to the wall if you have something too thin like a bed sheet uh, it's not really going to do anything you're probably better off using a stack of towels all right, so once you've found your space, I'm going to be giving you a little list of a few microphones that I personally picked out at different price ranges that are commonly used for vocal recording. So don't forget that there's a pop filter that's always good to have. You can make them at home with like, uh, like a hanger and maybe some pantyhose. I've made those before. Um, but you can get these for around 20 to 30 bucks for a pop filter. Some microphones come with shock mounts, not all of them. Uh, this particular mic is a C414, I think it's XL2. This is a condenser mic, so you have two types of mics, condenser and dynamic. The condensers are usually ran off power, the dynamics uh, move with a coil, so these do not require power, but they usually require a little more gain from your interface or your preamps. These are a little more sensitive, so they don't require as much gain because they have power already sent to them. They're a little more sensitive. Um, one of uh, The first microphone I'm going to cover is a NT1A. So this is a great mic. It's a condenser microphone. I do not own one, but I've heard nothing but great things about the NT1A. I've seen many professionals travel with the NT1A when they're doing recordings like on site like whether they're staying in a hotel or wherever they may be and this is one that I've heard a lot of rappers carry um, and you can't beat it the price at like 230 I think it's like 230 bucks for a brand new one uh, the next one is the SM7B and I'm gonna move over to it this one I do have um, so the SM7B is a dynamic mic uh, it's used on a wide range of things. You've probably recognized it just by the way it looks and uh, a lot of like YouTube videos have been shot with it. It's good for like a voiceover mic, uh, but it's also a really good music mic. It's like a Swiss Army knife for recordings and I believe Thriller was recorded on it. It's uh, very versatile. Like I mentioned, the price point on these are about 400 bucks. Um, Preferably the che or is probably the cheapest mic that is most commonly used on hit records besides the SM57. Um, so the next mic is going to be an AT4040 or an AT4050, and then those are 
probably the AT4040 is 300, the AT4050 is 700. These are really good vocal mics. I've seen a lot of rap hits being made with these. And uh, I've seen these in like mic lockers at professional studios. So those are really good mics. There's also an AT2020. I do have that one. It's about a hundred bucks and it's it's pretty good it's a condenser microphone and last but not least the sm58 so this that one's also a dynamic mic i do not own one but i've heard nothing but good things about this one it's priced right at 100 bucks brand new it's also a swiss army knife type mic um and i mentioned in this one because it's a great mic for the studio it's cheap and robust and it's used on a ton of live sound applications. So you can throw these things around. Like uh, when I was in audio school, they were like, you can use, these are like, you can hammer a nail in and it still works. So these are just some different applic or these, these are different type of mics that I'm showing you here. Uh, you do want to stay about the distance from your pinky to your thumb stretched out from a mic. I, whenever I have a client, I'll put the pop filter about that distance away if you're too close you're not gonna let the coil or the diaphragm move like you want it to you're putting too much pressure on it so uh, this is just a, a few examples here and I'll catch you on the next slide one thing I didn't mention um, if you like the lower end of uh, interfaces some of them they don't have as high gain or they have a lot of noise floor if the preamps aren't that great. Um, one option that you can do if, if you only have a dynamic microphone, you'll find yourself a lot of times cranking up the gain almost all the way to get these type of mics to be loud enough. So there's something called a cloud lifter and they make different, different brands, you know, different companies make different brands of these. This is the one I own. What this does is this bring this sends power to the microphone. It brings the level up. Uh, it brings less noise up before it gets to your preamp or your interface. So that way you don't have to crank it all the way up. And a lot of times, like I said, those those preamps that are in your interface will bring up a lot of noise. So this is a good way. Like if you only have a dynamic mic, you can get one of these for less than a hundred bucks and this will get your signal to where you need it if you don't have access to a condenser mic or if you prefer dynamic mics. This is a good way to go. All right, so we've talked about the space and how to choose a space, some options on how to treat it. We've talked about some microphones and a couple of techniques, a couple of different style, types of microphones. So now that you have a little more knowledge about that, the next thing would be interfaces. And there is no right interface. Really with audio is what works best for you, what do you like to use. And in my particular case, I use an Apollo 8P. It has a ton of inputs. Um, I do record live bands, live instruments here, and so I'll need a couple of different inputs. It has a lot more options for what I need, different metering and stuff. Um, but there are options like the Scarlett, uh, Focusrite Scarlett. Uh, those are a little bit more affordable, and I see a ton of you know, small home studios or even small professional home studios who have them. The Apollo has different series. The Universal Audio Aero, the Apollo Twin series, and those are great options, a little bit more affordable. And chances are, if you're just tracking vocals at home, even if you're tracking guitar or other instruments, the most you're going to need is one to two inputs until you're getting into live bands and drums and things like that. So that's one thing to consider on interfaces. There is no magic number to set the gain to when using a microphone. It's going to be, it's going to change whether you're this far away from a mic versus right up on a mic or whether you're singing soft or yelling really loud. It's always going to make a difference in how you set your gain. So in the next video, I'm going to explain a little more of the important part of your metering and how to get the right level that you need within a recording program. You can hit us up at frescorecordingservices at gmail.com. 
if you have any suggestions on any other videos or anything that you can't find on YouTube that you need a little bit more explanation on, I'll be happy to do that. So follow these next videos coming forward and stay healthy and stay indoors.